We've seen 25 arrests recently in connection with last year's riots in July, which of course left over 300 people dead and cost the economy billions of rands in damage. The Hawks are rounding up suspects, but police are quite tight-lipped about who they are and what happens next. Well, NCA's uh, Desen Thathia and Govan Whittles are focusing on this story today. And thank you both for joining us. Uh, so, Govan, I'm going to start with you, because although the 25 arrests that have taken place in the last week or so have been, uh, got a lot of media coverage, the truth is the arrests actually did begin last year. And we've seen uh, a number of arrests since then. So talk to us about uh, how the arrests are shaping up and where we are. Well, what's important to point out here is that the police have always intended to arrest a large number of people who they believe were in one way or another responsible for starting the July unrest or engaging in the unrest or fanning the flames while the unrest was ongoing. And in that regard, they've always intended to arrest close to 100 people. But to be fair, they did point out that there were these 12 people who masterminded the entire affair on uh, social media, WhatsApp groups, some of them. Um, but there are predominantly three categories of people. And the first category is former politicians or current politicians. And among them, we have Bruce Nimrod. He's the leader of the Patriotic Alliance in the West Rand. He was the first person to be arrested, but he's not the only person from a political party um, that was arrested. Bonginkosi Kanyile used to belong to the EFF. He's since jumped ship to the Patriotic Alliance as well. But then, of course, there's Temba Mnisi um, in uh, the uh, eastern side of Gauteng, uh, who is affiliated to the ANC. So those politicians are currently appearing on charges, all of them appearing on charges of incitement to cause public violence. But what we've seen at their court appearances, barring uh, the ANC, has been the Patriotic Alliance coming out to support these people and insisting that they've been accused falsely. The other group of people are personalities uh, who command significant networks in KwaZulu-Natal and in Gauteng and also have a large following of their own. Um, in this group, you have the likes of Ngizwe Mkunu. Remember, he's a self-styled politician who uh, had a lot to say during the unrest and also gained a large following post the unrest. And then the f final group would be people who allegedly incited the violence on social media, Twitter more specifically. And in this case, there's the account called this PTPT evaluator who was unmasked um, after the riots took place and the unrest had concluded and then the hawks started to sweep in on people who they believed was behind it, but subsequently those charges were withdrawn. And then the headline person who most people are calling for action to be taken against and who's tweeted this afternoon um, about potential action against, that's the daughter of the former president, Jacob Zuma, uh, Dudu Sambata Zuma. And she's indicated that she knows there's a plan to uh, arrest her, although um, she thinks that it'll happen in a certain way. There's been no confirmation from the Hawks that they'll arrest her. There's been confirmation that they are investigating her, and to which extent her remarks during the unrest fanned the flames and led to more violence. So I've prepared a report on this, looking back at the timeline from the first arrest to where we are now. And there's also a tidbit from Bekit Kele, the Minister of Police, who sets out some of the numbers uh, of the arrests that are expected and the ones that have already been confirmed. Let's take a look now. The Patriotic Alliance's West Rand leader, Bruce Nimrod, was the first to be arrested after police identified him as the person behind a voice note telling people to block roads. But Nimrod insisted that this was not his voice, and his party sprung to his defense. It is not a political party now that says, no, because he's our leader, we don't believe that that's his voice note. No, it is factual that what they, the voice note that they claim is the voice of leader Namrud is not true. Then the self-styled KZN politician in Gizwem Kunu was arrested after he was allegedly linked to igniting the unrest. Outside court, he accused the police of conspiring against him and another alleged instigator. I'm out today because of the justice system. If it, if it was the wish for, the, for, 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 for people who arrested us, we shouldn't be here. Even Bonkosi today should be in, brought in jail so that they can cruise, control and loot the whole country. Despite these arrests, the Hawks were under pressure to act against Twitter users who were seen to be inciting the violence. One of these was the woman behind the Spiti Piti Evaluator account but the charges against her were eventually withdrawn. Soon after this, the police minister raised expectations, saying dozens more people would be arrested. 
the DPCI is putting eye on 86 more people uh, on, the, on this matter. But there are 19 that would be regarded as instigators. Eight are arrested by DPCI, which are hawks. And 11 are arrested by the detective team that was put together there. So there are 19, they remain as 19. Two of them cases have been withdrawn and almost all of them, they are on bail. Once you are on bail, which means there is a case to answer. And it seems the Hawks are under pressure to act against former President Jacob Zuma's daughter, Duduzile, who posted this tweet anticipating her own arrest. All eyes are now on the Hawks to see if they will follow through. Govan Whittles, Johannesburg. Interesting. That reminds me of what I think it was Ace Machashulu who said, I know how they're going to arrest me. I know how they're going to do it. Uh, Desen Thathia, let's bring you in here. You've been working a different angle on the story, You're trying to speak to some of the people who were arrested most recently. In total, I think it's 25 people. We don't really know much about them, uh, as far as I know. Um, uh, you have managed to speak to one person, though. Tell us more. Well, Sal, uh, I think one of the key questions when we first heard about these arrests was on which level were these, in the initial 20 people that we'd heard about, which level did they fall on? And I think our colleague Goldman broke it down quite nicely about in, and, and described the various levels, you know, the masterminds, and then you had those that supposedly incited, and then you had the looters. And initially, there was a sense that we were going to be talking about more of the masterminds that were arrested. But when we were in court on Friday, the, the sense that we got from the charges that were leveled against those was that these were the people that were accused of inciting violence in whatever form. So they were the ones that were on particularly two WhatsApp groups, the Eteguini shutdown, as well as the free Jacob Zuma WhatsApp group. And that's where it's alleged a lot of the coordination for the looting and the violence that we saw took place. So people from various parts of the province got together and discussed their how they would do this. So many of those that were arrested, if not all of them, were those that were part of that WhatsApp group. And we, well, over the past day or so, we've been trying to get a sense of who these people are and try to chat to them. My colleague, Sandile Makubela, and myself have spent a lot of time on the road, uh, knocking on doors, talking to people, and trying to just understand that. But the sense that we got in doing that is that a lot of these people, especially in the first batch, are literally just ordinary people. These are those that are unemployed. Some of them do hold certain, uh, some of them uh, are in, in employment, uh, jobs like teachers. Others are, are just uh, young, you know, late 20s, early 30s. So that's the kind of profile that we are talking about. And we had the opportunity, after much convincing, to speak to one of those that was implicated. And she says that she was taken by surprise when the hawks arrived there uh, to arrest her. And she says that she saw many vehicles that were there. There were people from other provinces, police officers from other provinces that were, were there to make the arrest. And she says she was taken by surprise because, in her words, she was being treated like a criminal. But let's listen to part of that interview that we did. We had to conceal her identity at her request because she felt that speaking to us publicly could compromise the ongoing court case. Kumezakulu <laughs> I mean, I was near about Luther. All men like a long series of women. Abandon keeping women. I ran a band. Who is 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 yeah, and this suspect was part of this WhatsApp group, or certainly one of them. Um, 
and the allegation is that the WhatsApp groups were used to plan attacks, certainly to cause uh, disruption uh, and to show unhappiness over the incarceration of Jacob Zuma. You've asked her about her role in the WhatsApp group and what the WhatsApp groups actually were doing. What did she say to you? That's right, Sal. So even if you look at the areas that we visited, I mean, we've been to Newlands and Inanda and Ferulam and other parts of the, the broader Durban area, but that's not just where these people were from. They're also from areas far out, like near Dundee and Numkababa as well, which is on the south. So in this particular case, and in this particular woman's case, she says that she was added in by a friend, someone that lives in the area she comes from, and had invited her to join this group. But because she supported the former president, Jacob Zuma, so fiercely, she didn't question what the, the, the nitty-gritty of the group was about. She just thought that it was an opportunity for her to voice her support for Jacob Zuma, as well as to organize, in her words, a march to a, or rather to get permission for a march that, that would be in support of the former president. So by her account, it was really just for that purpose. And she says that those that looted and other people that were involved in organizing all the other forms of destruction, that was completely out of their hands. And again, according to her, she claims that she was, her intentions were, were good. So we did speak about that. She says that uh, there were others that were there that she didn't know. So effectively, this was a group of strangers from across the province that were bonded or united by their common purpose, and that was to show support for the former president. Mm, interesting. Um, where are we with the investigations? Because, uh, as you explained earlier this week uh, with uh, Bonking, uh, with uh, uh, Kanyile, who was arrested, the Freeze Must Fall activist, arrested in connection with the July mm. unrest, he is going to trial on Friday. He was arrested last year. There were quite a few people arrested last year. This sort of 25, 26 batch now. Um, how many more are we expecting? Where are the hawks in their investigations? So you'll recall from the court case last week that they had, uh, especially the state, when we'd spoken to them, they'd said that this was the first batch and they were expecting that there would be more accused in the days to come. So the intention was that the first batch appeared in court and then we saw two more and then we saw the other three that appeared. But ultimately, this was meant to happen over the coming days, leading to the 26th of August. And the intention there was for all of them to appear simultaneously because they would all be charged with, they would all be facing the same charges because these were the people that were allegedly in that WhatsApp group. So the Hawks still has some way to go in fulfilling its responsibilities in, in, in getting all of those uh, that were in that group arrested and charged. So that is still ongoing. And this comes at a point where we saw, uh, I think, I guess it would be silence in the, in the public space, but it doesn't mean that they were not working. It's just that we didn't hear much about it. And last week, this investigation gained impetus again when we saw uh, these task teams being put together or rather continuing their work and leading to those arrests and those court appearances. But let's listen to another part of that interview that I conducted with one of the accused. And she claims that, again, the, the way this was handled was com completely wrong because in, in her view, she feels that if she was really one of the architects of the July unrest, she felt that why is it that she hadn't benefited? She's living in exactly the same conditions. She says she doesn't have looted items. She really was just there with, um, with, with different intentions to what we saw play out. But let's listen into uh, a part of that interview that speaks to this. Was young and yeah, interesting point. I was making the case, making the point. Uh, I may have been on that WhatsApp group to see what people were saying. Doesn't prove, or does it, uh, that this person was an instigator? And I suppose that is what the investigations are going to have to reveal or not.
Zesan Vatia, thank you so much. Coming to us live from Durban earlier, we heard from Govan Whittles in Johannesburg.